Oh, hey there. You know, there are quite a few terrible things about the A's potentially playing in Sacramento next year. From Vivek Ranadive letting his good friend John Fisher gouge Sacramentans over ticket prices in that very stadium, to the woefully amateur setup that likely awaits. But I can tell you firsthand right now, living it under the sun. It is the weather that remains a topic no one wants to talk about in the athletics organization, in Major League Baseball's commissioner's office, but it is a huge problem. I don't mind the sun sometimes, the images it shows. It is August 27th, and one year from today, the Athletics will hypothetically be hosting the Detroit Tigers in that very stadium, Sutter Health Park. Currently, it's 83 or so degrees outside. As the heat index rises over the next two to three hours, temperatures will climb into the low to mid 90s. Your only option over that two to three hours is to be blasted by the sun, a merciless sun in Sacramento. That though, is fun that fans are going to get to enjoy. Not only get to enjoy, but a level of fun that Fisher and Rob Manfred believe will play. Professional baseball served with a heaping helping of heat stroke. Who wouldn't want to sign up for that? Unsurprisingly, Rob Manfred and John Fisher have downplayed just how many times the A's will have day games in Sacramento, especially during June, July, and August when temperatures are soaring. The thing is, though, through some basic critical thinking, we can actually piece things together. For starters, Sunday home games will be played during the day, and there are seven of those in Sacramento during those scorching summer months. We know the A's will be playing during the days on Sundays because MLB has already come out and said they are not switching their TV contract, which sees Sunday night baseball get an exclusive nighttime window. Beyond that, you're also going to see some day games during the week, giving Major League Baseball teams desire to not travel during off days, as well as just some teams having back-to-backs that will necessitate travel. With that in mind, let's explore potential Day games based on teams needing to get out of Sacramento on the same day. So the end of a three or four game series where the opposition needs to be somewhere else the following day or simply would like a day off. We'll exclude teams who either play the next day or have their next series somewhere on the West Coast in the Pacific and Mountain time zones because it's possible for them to either fly out that night. There's no huge travel time involved with that. First up is June 5th. On that day, the Minnesota Twins will be playing in Sacramento. And on June 6th, they head home to host the Blue Jays. This has to be a day game in the capital for sure. Minnesota Twins need to be back in Minnesota the following day. They are not catching a red eye in this scenario. Fast forward to July 10th. The Atlanta Braves play in Sacramento and then are at St. Louis for a series against the Cardinals the very next day. This has to again be a definite day game in order for the Braves to make it to the Lou in time. Finally, there's August 27th. The Tigers and A's will face off in Sacramento hypothetically on that day. Now, Detroit does not have a contest the very next day. They play at Kansas City on August 29th. It is possible This is scheduled as a night game in Sacramento, but I'd say it's unlikely. Besides, the Heat's not going to want to stop fans in Sacramento from wanting to see Javi Baez strike out on multiple occasions, or maybe not. At the very least, the Athletics will play nine day games during June, July, and August of next year. That, though, could potentially rise to 10. Now, you're probably wondering to yourself, how does that compare to the Rivercats? A good question, and here's the answer. The AAA Ball Club has played eight of its 37 home games during June, July, and August during the days, with these either having a 1235 or 105 start time. There are two interesting things to note here as it relates to attendance and temperatures. Let's start with the former. The Rivercats use the temperature at first pitch, what skews data fairly favorably. In fact, you would think it was downright balmy here in Sacramento. The average temperature at first pitch this year has been around 83 to 84 degrees on average for day games. The hottest day was 93 degrees at first pitch and the coolest 79. 
The heat business, well, it tends to pick up around one or two o'clock here in Sacramento. Really, that's when things start to get downright miserably. Low to mid 80s first pitch will be greeted by temperatures in the 90s for those final two to three innings. For fans crammed in those plastic seats, it's going to feel like they are sitting in a broiler. It might be even worse for players, though, as they partake in a game on the newfangled plastic pitch coming in 2025. This assumes fans in Sacramento turn up for these day games, something that has not historically been the case for the Rivercats. Of the eight summer day games in 2024, only one has surpassed the team's average game attendance, and that was the very first one on June 2nd. Mostly, the Rivercats are drawing less than 5,000 fans in a 14,000 seat venue when playing on summer days. Oh, but MLB will be different, you say. Why? People here stop doing things during hot summer days, especially when those things involve sitting out in the hot ass sun for multiple hours. A Giants day game? Yeah, it's going to do fine attendance numbers, but what about the Angels or Tigers? I'd hazard to guess that folks aren't exactly going to be lining up for the opportunity to get a wicked sunburn and to watch a subpar baseball team treat our city like one of those Auburn Boulevard prostitute motels. No disrespect to those fine establishments, at least they're open and honest about what they're doing. Well, not really, but it's close enough. Wait, it turns out it may not even matter if people show up to these day games. Fans in Sacramento are being asked to subsidize day games through insanely demanding season ticket packages. That means if fans show up, if fans don't show up during the day games, it doesn't matter because those tickets are already going to be paid for. For all of Major League Baseball's talk about player safety and caring about fans, having the A's play so many day games in Sacramento seems to aggressively ignore both of those. Hell, the Rivercats shouldn't be playing so many day games in the first place. It's clearly bad for business. The players clearly are not enjoying it. There has to be a better solution here. To that end, Major League Baseball Players Association do something. Show some intestinal fortitude and take a stand instead of kowtowing to owners like you seemingly always have done in the past two decades. Better to draw a line in the sand today instead of next August when visiting teams are roasting in 90 plus degree temperatures on that long ass walk to the clubhouse which is going to be located behind the left field wall. Something no other stadium in baseball is allowed to do, by the way. Look, there are hotter markets in Major League Baseball than Sacramento, but these days, those teams are not playing outdoors during the day. On most summer Sundays this season, Sacramento would have recorded the hottest first pitch temperature when playing at home. Not always, but as far as the consistent heat is concerned, well, the block is hot here. Interestingly, Sacramento Republic FC, our city's USL soccer team, will play a grand total of zero day games between May 25th and September 14th. Every single one of their games during this span has kicked off between 7 and 8 p.m. I have been out here for a minute and I am cooked. Thankfully though, I'm in a polo shirt and shorts and not one of those poorly made Fanatics polyester jerseys. Those poor players, man, they're going to feel this heat next year. Also, thankfully, I'm not crammed into the stains of a stadium designed some 25 years ago while heat radiates off a plastic playing surface. 25% cooler, who cares? It's still freaking hot. I can hear what some of you are saying right now. Sacramento is going to turn up for the A's on these oppressive summer days. Yeah, sure thing. Just like you've been doing it for the River Cats. Oh wait, no one does that. Even if you want to say it's different because MLB is involved, I just don't think it tracks. The A's are not Sacramento's team, and there are a lot of other clubs in Major League Baseball that aren't worth sitting in the sun for, regardless of if the stadium is 90 miles or a ninth of a mile away from the capital. Vivek Ranadive allegedly wants the A's playing in Sacramento to show why our city is a major league city. Instead though, all you've done is let John Fisher and Rob Manfred set you up and by proxy the city up for failure. Better yet, Vivek, why don't you come out here with me and try surviving a few hours in the midday sun sitting at the stadium you 
own. Then again, you do own the stadium, you do own the team, and you're not doing that already, so I'm not holding my breath on this. It's cool sitting inside your climate-controlled arena with courtside seats for the Kings, but summertime in Sutter Health Park with the sun blasting down on you like it is with me, it's not so much fun, is it? Really, this just proves that Vivek Ranadive isn't a true Sacramento sports fan. He's in it for himself. I mean, look, come out here, sit in the sun, see how you like it. I'm guessing, though, you don't have the cojones to do so. Vivek Ranadive, you are all talk and no walk. To those stupid enough to fall for this tragedy of airs, have fun in that solar oven of a stadium next year. I hear SPF 69 is a rather nice choice. It's freaking hot out here. I am tapping out. So until next time, I am Cheyenne Hollis, an MLB team playing in that stadium next year. It's a mistake. Hashtag sell the team. Hashtag sell the Kings. And until next time, you know what? Never mind. I'm going out to West Sac because there's still a Rite Aid there that serves thrifty ice cream by the scoop. Sugary and softly spoken lines.